you know, painting a big version of this picture. There's some clouds in here that have some nice little, and I probably would paint them in first before I painted in the trees because the trees go over top and in front. But you see these clouds right at the horizon. Uh, if, you, if you get enamored of little details like that, one thing you need to really remember is to keep them uh, low contrast and paler. And because you don't want the, these are clouds that are far away from you. You notice that the light part of the clouds is not as light as those, and the dark part of the cloud part of the clouds is not as dark as those. It's just they're faded out, and the only way you get things to fade out into the distance is to really watch your contrast. I would normally put them in, but you know, I'm just, this is just a demo. So, and uh, I'm making pine trees here. Flip the paper so that I have an easier shot at this here. Now, I have no idea since I'm painting this upside down, the picture's right side up. I don't know how it matches and I don't really care. Um, that's for those of you who count what you're painting. <laughs> Not mentioning any names. Mm -hmm. um, it's not really necessary. You know? That's kind of wiggly. Now, again, I would go back later on probably and, and tidy the horizon up. Um, It's basically a black line at the horizon, so you can finish that and move it around a little bit pretty much whenever you want. You could always move it down in this case, but you can't move it back up. Not easily, anyway. Um, now, there's some trees that are a little farther away, and I'm going to indicate that by making them a little bluer and pale up. Yeah. And after this, I will get to the dogs again, and then um, I forget what's after that. But. The tree trim work. Oh yeah, well that's basically just uncovering it. And I think I did foliage, not tree trunk parks in that case. But we'll see what it looks like when it comes out. Um, well, we wouldn't object if you wanted to stretch your legs. You've been ahead a long time. Didn't you? Excuse me. Oh, well, you know, I don't want to run too late because then Nancy's going to have to keep the place open. Mm -hmm. Excuse me? Actually, that's a good suggestion. I might go out and stretch my legs in a minute, but first, I'm going to do a little bit more on finishing this picture here. Okay, so we get the trees, and I would paint that just the way I did with basically a puddly wash. Uh, and the same thing, you've seen, you know, we've done the water and the stripes and so forth enough times that I'm going to leave, I'm, I'll leave that to your imagination. Uh, the clouds is, is pretty simple, actually. Now, all you need to do is go back in and f infill the darker areas of the clouds, and they'll be sort of browner, not that green. I, I had an unfortunate green there. But, uh, although they, will, they might have a kind of a greenish cast to them. One thing to remember about clouds, it's odd. Out here, they're kind of pinkish colored underneath. Uh, that's because the ground is all pinkish colored. Um, out above forests, they do tend to have a darker, greener, bluer cast to them, and that's just because whatever's underneath them, they pick up the colors of that a little bit. Um, but they are not as blue as the sky. 
these shadowed areas of the, of the clouds. I will sometimes, if I had time, I would go back in here and, and bloom these a little bit. You know, I, I, and I don't know if I can do this with the hair dryer or not, whether I've got time. Let me try it, I'll just since we're a little bit short of time. I'm gonna not yet. I was trying to be close. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. Close, not quite. This goes right. Well, you know, but she was pulled off sides, you know. I, I kind of gave her an indication that she was supposed to do it. She was an A for enthusiasm. All right. And the clouds do have a perspective to them. They've got this, you know, they get closer together towards the horizon. You can see it over here. See that? And so you start out with the sort of bigger masses of clouds, and then as you get close to the horizon, you have this sort of stripey effect here down here. Okay, now... Do and I don't. I, timing with a hairdryer is atrocious. Yeah, I think I missed it. Well, maybe not down here. I can usually go back in and and make a little bloom or blossom back in these. That makes it look more cloud-like. I don't know if you can see what's happening down here. Using the hairdryer kind of spoils your timing because it speeds everything up and you got to catch it. You know, it's a little more. All right. uh, and the other thing is, if you paint over a scrubbed area like that, it's kind of messed up. It, it helps to remember where you've scrubbed so that you don't actually paint on it. Um, but anyway, that's. Kind of the way I'd do that. This is a sunset and there was, you know, orange in there. How would you do that? Um, can that go for <laughs> another time? <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna paint it right now. Uh, that's a whole other ball game. It's just different. Um, and it's a, another half hour demonstration, and I, I need to do the dogs and the koi fish too. So. However, you're free to sign up for another workshop. <laughs> Good answer. Yeah, there you go. Priscilla would be proud of me. <laughs> That's the right answer. Um, Wait, where do you live? Well, you're not far away from either direction. He doesn't know if you're here. Yeah, there you go. I mean, if I can come from where I came from. <laughs> Uh, anyway, you know, I could have continued, but you, you get the idea. You know, I blot, I paint the whole thing, I blot out the clouds, I maybe scrub a few little places, then I paint the clouds back in and I paint the foreground and over top of everything. It's a very monochromatic picture. Unveil the saran wrap here before. I didn't know you had to keep it on that long. Oh, until it's totally dry. Oh. In fact, it may not, it looks to me like it's not it's quite dry. Yet. Yeah. But we're running out of time. So. It's coming off. Okay, right here, right now. Serene wrap's coming off. Oh, that does look like pony. Oh, wow. Is that really? Pony? <laughs> wow. It's a little mossy. Mm. See, this wasn't on quite long enough, even so. I mean, it should have been on longer, but uh, 
I just put some green paint on there. I put the saran wrap on top and you weight it down. Okay. okay. Now what you can do if you want to turn it into something, uh, supposing it were foliage, you start out with something that looks like it might have been leaves and you just uh, sort of extend it. And you can you go back in and play with it, you know, shove things around. You can paint on top of it, you know. It will move around. It's fun to do with the foliage and feel in the shape. Yeah, but, you know, it's a, it's just a trick. It's one of a zillion texturizing tricks, you know. But I'm not going to do too much on this because we have a little buggy to get to. All right. And by the way, where is the doggy? It's right there. I thought, where's the paper that I put the mask in for it on? It's got to be around somewhere. Well, I'll leave the saran wrap there for anybody that wants to see. Uh, and actually, we may use this for pine trees later. Oh, yeah. There you go, pine trees. Oh. Get in that in a minute. But I really need to find that. Oh, is it on the seat? Wasn't there one? Was it put on the seat? Where is it? It's right over here. Mm -hmm. Where did the dog with the masking go? Well, just the flat, the flat. The masking? No, the, the, the paper the one started. The, 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 the one that I started, I put the mask on it. I put the mask on it, and it was drying, and somebody said, well, I'll. Put it someplace safe and. Uh, <laughs> it's safe, all right. Okay, yeah, so where'd it go? Oh, you oh, took your paint. Oh, good. Oh, it's it. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I remember which side was up here, too. Okay, now the dog is, of course, darker than everything in the picture, so I can paint in the water first. sort of around the word things. Um, that's actually probably not a bad color, and I can just... It has, you yeah, I'm painting it in horizontal stripes, because I don't want to mess all of my tracing paper up. I'll, I'll paint this right behind where the dog is, because he's sort of on. And then it gets down into some bluer stuff down here. I'll be a little bit careful because I'm painting fairly dry here. Now, partly because I'm in a hurry, guys. And, uh, I hope those little things came out up there. You know, that I masked. I hope they stay masked. Because well, I've never really tried splattering the mask it on that kind of scale yet and uh, it may be that those drops were a little too small really stay on the paper it's a little browner down there whoops not that brown okay come on uh, no, I'm in a little bit of a hurry uh, since I've been running behind, so I'm painting this a little drier, and also because the water in this picture has all these little ripples, and I can actually kind of texturize it with the dry brush as I'm going along. Okay, now that's going to dry at some point, and while it's drying, and you notice I'm not even I'm not messing with that masking stuff at all. I'm just leaving it right where it is. It's kind of the last thing I do is pull the mask off. It's like opening a Christmas present or like pulling off the saran wrap. 
You don't know quite what's there till you actually do it. So uh, down about in here, well, it's still just damp. See, and it's still I'm doing it dry and to wet now. I was talking to someone, and I forget who. Uh, this would be blooming terribly if I had a wet brush. But in fact, the brush is pretty dry. So I can get away with doing this into a damp paper because what's on the brush is, is really dry. If I had a lot of water on the brush and I did that in the damp spot, hope you saw what happened. Yep. So how fast that happened? Immediately. Yeah. And if you do get a bloom sometimes and you want to get it out, you can always if there's a texture in the painting anywhere, you kind of do it. You can take a really dry brush sometimes. Um, I don't have any dry brushes. They're all sort of used. Uh, and then just kind of gently kind of whisk it. And you can get rid of it. Okay, now this is this area in here that had the big mask is the real big splash. Okay, now the dog... Um, the hairdryer, please. Thank you. Now, I've taken a little bit of a chance there because sometimes the mask doesn't come off very well after you've hit it with the hairdryer. Sometimes it some brands of masks just bake on. I hope that one doesn't. Okay, now. Well, this actually is ivory black, but he is, after all, a black lavender. I normally wouldn't use it, but it's just handy, it's right there. A little undertone, the, the uh, highlights in the dog's fur, they have real glossy fur even when they're dry. Uh, they're, I would say, kind of purplish compared to the rest of the picture. A little bit of a violet undertone in the highlights. So I suppose that's what I'll do is an underpainting here. Now I haven't drawn this dog, obviously. Um, I'm going to have to draw it with a brush. You know, you know. And so I may mess it up, you know, just the way it goes. I will try not to. <laughs> they always look like they're having so much fun. Mm -hmm. you know? now, I've I've never liked things like the Westminster Dog Show. I mean, they always seem kind of stupid. These dogs parading around, you know. But I love, if you've ever seen any of these shows with dogs with what they call field trials, you know, uh, the agility courses and sheepdog trials and things like that, because they're, they're doing what they're supposed to be doing and they're just having such a good time. I just love watching those. That's what she is. She's a field trial and hunt test champion. Mm. Oh. Well, Sasha, there's a picture of attitude. Oh, she's so bad. Oh, Sasha? Uh, yeah, she's a friendly little dog, huh? Oh, she's not going to be little. No. Who's Sasha belong to? Uh, the fellow back there in the marine <laughs> shirt, right? Yeah. I think I'll just met. Yeah. Calvin. Yeah. Calvin. Yeah. Uh, well, I kind of brought this He's a up too far. Actually, the dog should be high. I kind of messed up the positioning of the dog a little bit. Uh, Sasha, I'm trying to figure out what Sasha is. She looks like a little part pit bull, maybe. And, She's and a red dog. She's what we call a red dog. 
Oh, well, yeah, yeah but I mean, like that, that can be anything, you know. Basically, res dog to me means underfed, not treated, not, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, every time we've been out on a reservation, Priscilla says, oh, God, somebody needs to save that dog. And I say, you know, we've already saved a bunch of dogs. <laughs> we, we can't... We can't accommodate anymore right now. She looks like she might even have a little husky. Uh, maybe she's so a Heinz 57, but the jawline, she looks like there's a little bit of pit bull in there. She's really, really friendly dog. Maybe that's a little yeah. rot. Um, that square jaw. Maybe. Good? It's possible. But, uh, oops, oh, that's a lot. My son has a Rottweiler and he's taught her to do, he does taping and drywall. Uh -huh. And he talks to her and just says, run down to the truck and get me another roll of tape or whatever it is. And then our <laughs> dog goes and does the stuff. Oh, they're smart dogs. Yeah. There, it, if they, it, the, they're usually real nice too. Well, most of the Rottweilers I've known, but boy, if you get one that's that's got a bad attitude, they're scary. I think they're, it's for do the master. You know, this is uh, it's it's a little bit of both. There are some dogs that just um, they're kind of tough to deal with. One of my Pekingese, uh, Tonka, he was a little hard to handle. Uh, although partly with him, unfortunately, was he he got an autoimmune disease. He was on the prednisone almost his whole life, so he had steroid problems. Uh, but boy, he bit some people really bad. I mean, they don't realize how bad a Pekingese can bite, but they've got these under you know bulldog jaws. Any kind of bulldoggy dog can really bite you if they want to. And uh, one time. Talk a bit, Priscilla, oh, clear down the bone in her thumb, mm -hmm. her finger, I forget which. She got me on the thumb. And I didn't go to the hospital. Priscilla went to the hospital when I got her, and and they called, I didn't realize, you know, they called us in. And the next thing we know, there was a cop and an animal control guy at our front door saying, where's the vicious dog, you know. And I didn't want them to take him away, so I, I calmed him down and I brought him out, cuddled him on my arms. I said, here's the vicious dog. And the guy looked at him and said, well, he says, I think I'll, I'll let you, him stay with you. He said, but you do have to take him in, have him microchipped, have him registered as a vicious dog and all the rest of it. Any, any, any bite that requires a hospital visit in Albuquerque, you've got to do that. Um, but we had to keep a close watch. You could not leave him around children. Little children, it was dangerous. Uh, but we treated him the same as we treated all our other dogs, and they were real nice. But he just... Uh, and he would be friendly with me most of the time, but he, you just couldn't cross him. Like if he decided he wanted to lay somewhere, uh, he, especially when he got older, he tried to move him. He, he just, you know he was going to bite you. Know if they're hurting or whatever. I get only if I hurt. Well, sure. I mean, Lola's that way, but she's not like him. I mean, she'll snap at you, but she won't clamp on and then, you know, just kind of like that. Is it showing on the screen? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You told the paper before you put it ask him on Excuse me? Did you tell Yeah, he did. Oh, you're, you're ready. You're ready. Mm -hmm. You told him a little bit. A little bit, it. yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's, I just didn't want the absolute dead white there. Um, and I'll have to dry this again real quick. That would not work. You're like your daughter, I'll throw some money. <laughs> you'd laugh at her when you'd hit me over the head. <laughs>
You wouldn't do that to me. She knows better. Does she still live near you? Uh, she lives about three blocks away from me. And then my other daughter with her three children live in Denver. Excuse me? Is that clear water you're putting on? I'm just, the brush is just damp. I'm yeah. just, I'm pushing paint from one part of the okay. picture to another. And so I'm not, I'm not lifting it. I'm not putting it down. I'm just moving it around. Whereas I guess it was Debbie, was that, that who spoke? Sculpting the picture, yeah. It's, it's like sculpting, you know, with modeling clay sort of, you know, you, you just move it from here and put it on there. I know, it's a funny legend too. That guy up there knows what he's doing. <laughs> oh, I don't, but he does. That's good. Okay. Good. We shouldn't say anything, I won't jinx it. see her eyes here. No, I don't want to make things up. this a little more. Make a hurricane in this town. I love it. Not like Anderson Cooper. Excuse me? Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. That's right. That's right. All right. Now, for you, those of you who are unfamiliar with masking stuff, it just rubs off. Now, down here, where I just really put it on thick. I've got to go back in and do some uh, some additional painting on this, obviously. Just, you know, I like the way these came out. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, that's a lot easier than painting it on with opaque white, obviously. Uh, but now in here, I have to sort of repaint over, you know, because because I I just probably got my fingerprints on there. Uh, and I'm not sure what color we had exactly, but I'll try to reproduce it. Uh, got another hour, so Oops, that's a little blue. Purple. I did, yeah, but I'm not using too much of it. It's kind of a boring color. Now that's too blue, obviously. So I need to 
things that you ought to get from these little mini demonstrations here uh, is learning to do things on the fly you know speed up a little bit once in a while I I will occasionally paint a really detailed um, really fussy you know portrait figure whatever that that I really really have to spend a lot of time and concentrate make sure the details are exactly right I spend a lot of time and I don't do all this stuff. But once in a while you need to speed up and let go just because it, it gives you the uh, power to recover from the mistakes that you're inevitably going to make once in a while when you paint watercolors. And I, I would hope that you would have noticed that, you know, I make a lot of little boo-boos but I try to catch them fast. And that's one of the things that you need to learn. Now, it's looking really nice, David. Oh, thank you. That's uh, Lizzie. Her official name is Watercolor Elizabeth Crimson. So Watercolor Elizabeth Crimson. Crimson. Oh, is right. Her name. <laughs> okay. That's the name of the dog. Yeah, and we also yeah. have a watercolor yeah, burnt sienna. <laughs> All righty. Cool. Yeah. When she went to wards, though, nobody cool. can pronounce it. Ah, uh, what is her? All right. That's what. Uh, where's my? Oh, I put them down so they're not in the way. And, well, we're not done quite yet, because uh, the dog's splashing through the water, and so we've got to actually sort of put her in contact with the water, if you know what I mean. She's splashing through the water, and we don't want her hind end to just sort of disappear. And, you know. <laughs> There, okay, now um, we've got her reflection, which kind of comes down through uh, this whole thing here. Of course, you're getting the idea, though, that, you know, you put on the masking fluid and it, it does this good stuff as far as getting, you know, the drops and the spray and everything else. But then you're going to want to go back and you're going to want to get rid of some of these. You know, like I decided to artistically say, you know, I don't want the one on her nose here, you know, or whatever. And so you can go back and touch up and get rid of some of these things. And, you know, paint over them and so forth and so on. It's, but it's a start where you can do this, this one big wash you know, in the first place without having to worry about painting around every drop and you don't have to go back in and you paint things in opaque white over top. Uh, I'm not really totally against opaque white. I use it on occasion for some things, but it's it's a tedious way to paint. If you're going to use a lot of it, you might as well switch to oils or acrylics or something opaque because once you start painting opaque, it means you're painting in every little detail on the painting instead of using the water to help you you get the effect that you want. Um, but I will use it, you know, in isolated little spots where it's easier to just use opaque white than to paint around or use mask or whatever. Um, I tend to use the masking fluid before I use the opaque white. Though. And I'm not going to finish up the, the reflection, but you can kind of you know, you all know how that would work, right? Mm -hmm. And the reflection of the splash, it just would lift? Uh, yeah, I'd probably just lift that out. Mm -hmm. uh, the reflection of the dog, you know, like so, just... That just looks mm. like it's moving. <laughs> 
It does. You just feel like it's part of the way you make it look you. like it's moving, and and uh, you do the same thing with a picture of surf, for instance. If you have, you know, painting surf things, <laughs> is is you do a lot of scrubbing because it it gives that indistinct look as though you couldn't quite focus on the motion.